Good morning to you. Good morning. Are you awake? Time to get up. I actually release these in the evening, so I should ask you, are you still awake? Wake up. Not time to go to bed yet. We're in, uh, oh, where are we? I didn't even tell you where we were last night. I don't even know. We're in North Dakota. I know that. I think we're on exit 331 or something like that. We're in a town called, one second, let me ask the almighty Google. We're in a town called, uh, oh, is there even a town here? Truck trash! Castleton. We're in Castleton, North Dakota. We just got up and we're about to get headed out there on the road. Beautiful truck stop here. Oh, it says it right on the water tower right there. Could have just looked right there. City of Castleton. Uh, that's typical of me. So I'm going to go up to Carrington, North Dakota, where I'm going to fill up these tanks. That's where the best fuel price is for me today along my route. And then we're going to head up across the border from Portal, North Dakota into North Portal, Saskatchewan in Canada. And go up to Langbank, Saskatchewan, where we're going to sleep there at our customer. Uh, or close by the customer anyways. I know Whitewood is just a little ways away from there. We might go up to there. We'll see. Uh, and we unload this load first thing tomorrow morning. And then I probably head home. I'm not sure if they're going to have anything for me uh, before I have to leave. We have to sign papers with our lawyers in a couple of days, which means I've got to be home. So once that's done, uh, then off we go. I, I, I guess it's, it's moving time. Ready to rock. Turn that on. Okay, just in case anybody needs to holler at me. Lights on, just in case people need to see me. Windows down in case I need some fresh air. Put the truck in gear, because I want to go forward. Well, let's just make sure our trailer's going to come with us. We're going to roll forward about 10 feet or so, and wow! Spike the trailer brake. That confirms that the trailer is attached. Brakes engage. And they release. Okay. You know the drill. Let's get out of here. Let's go to Saskatchewan, Neri. Eh? Oh boy. Lots to see today. All the way across North Dakota. Me and the Saskatchewan one. So much scenery, looking so forward to it. Actually, I kid, but North Dakota's actually got quite a bit of scenery, and so it does Saskatchewan. And the prairies and plains here are home to me, so I do love this region the best. This is my favorite region of North America. From Manitoba all the way down to Kansas, Saskatchewan, Alberta, Montana. My favorite part of this continent. Everything's so wide open, there's lots of space. Everybody's very friendly. Yeah, it gets cold, but like I was explaining the other day, that's okay. The cold keeps out the riffraff. I used to call it the riffraft until my wife started making fun of me. Apparently it's riffraff troublemakers and poisonous animals. It's too cold to cause problems here. This is going to be one of those days going directly into the wind for most of the day. It's coming straight from Canada and we're going right towards Canada. We had such great fuel economy all the way from Iowa up to here and then you hit the plains and the prairies and the wind. It gets you every time. That's how you know you're at home. Because you gotta hold your hat on your head because the wind will blow it right off. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Holy smokes. Wow. That was the second attempt that guy made dangerously passing me. I had to hit the brakes so he could get in front of me. The first time he came up beside me on a solid line 
and almost caused a head-on collision. That didn't teach him anything, so he did it again. So I finally let off to let him pass me because I was scared he was going to kill somebody around me. And I just want him out of my hair. I, I don't understand why drivers do that. I'm doing the speed limit right now. But he wants to do two miles an hour faster, right? He's got to do that two miles an hour faster, save that 30 seconds. Everybody out here on the roads just trying to get home to their families. But that guy, his time is more valuable than your life. Pulling into the Casey's at Carrington. Just a little ways down the road from where that guy pulled that genius maneuver. Proceed to the highlighted route. Uh, no, I'm gonna park here for a little bit, let him get away from me a little further. I want nothing to do with him. The first time he pulled out to pass me, pulled out right in front of an oncoming truck, almost had a head-on collision. The second time, that happened. It's just, I want as much space between me and him as possible. Just don't understand people. Like I was saying earlier today, there's going to be people out there that make you very angry on the road. And we got to try our best to be professional and control our emotions on the road. That guy made me so upset. It was like I was saying, that was the second time he tried to get past me. The first time, he pulled out to pass me, there's an oncoming semi-truck. It was around a corner. I could see the semi-truck coming, he had a solid line. Pulls out to pass, gets almost halfway past me, and this big truck comes around the corner that he finally sees. Has to slam on the brakes and go in back behind me. The second time he pulled out to pass, it was over a hill, just a little bit. I could see there was a car coming, but he just kept going that time. He kept going, and he, he I guess he was just gonna push me off the road. So I, I hit the brakes so he could get in front of me. Now this is all too common of an occurrence. This isn't uncommon, unfortunately, especially up uh, in this area, not in North Dakota, but around. Unfortunately, when you get back up closer to Canada, you see this more often where guys are taking just ridiculous, dangerous chances. And you see them in the ditch all the time, especially the first snowfall. Like it's supposed to snow tomorrow. Actually tonight and tomorrow up in Canada. Guaranteed. Guys like that, you're gonna see them in the ditch, jackknifed, right away. I don't know how these guys are getting their driver's licenses. I don't know who's hiring them. I don't know how they get behind the wheel, but they're the ones you gotta look out for. He was impatient about this close to my bumper behind my truck. When he caught up to me, he was back there for maybe about 10 miles. I saw him back there, I tried to radio him. I said, I see you back there as soon as it's clear. I'll, I'll let you know and you can come on past, right? I'm not gonna make it hard on you, I might even slow down. Obviously doesn't use his radio. I mean, I didn't use mine for years either, but uh, anyways, uh, he pulls out to pass. I flash on my cargo lights to let him know it's not safe. He comes out anyway. I try letting him know there's a car coming, driver. There's a car coming. Back off. Didn't back off. And that was the second guy who did that to me today already too. Both with Canadian plates. One was a British Columbia plate, one was an Ontario plate. The US drivers seem to have a lot more sense about them. Unfortunately, I'm a Canadian driver. But <laughs> uh, today it's been uh, trucks from back home. And that upsets me because I really love our, our friends here in the US. These are our brothers and sisters. This is our closest ally they're our family and being here is a privilege we are their guests and we're supposed to act accordingly and act with respect respect their country respect our laws and respect their highways especially their people don't put their people in danger by driving dangerously in their country that's ridiculous so when I see people with Canadian plates in the US driving like that and putting other people at risk, it really makes my blood boil even more. I said, because they're putting a bad name on me. Now, when other people, when they see that, and then they come up behind my truck and they see Canadian plates, that's what they're gonna think of. Oh, great, another one of these Canadian drivers. Better keep our distance. This guy's crazy. He gives me a bad name. So, like I say every day, usually at the end of my vlog, just remember when you're out there, to drive safe.
saving that extra 10 seconds isn't always worth it. A lot of, well, all of Canadian trucks that operate within Ontario and Quebec are governed at 65 miles an hour, 105 kilometers an hour. If you're following someone that's going 103 kilometers an hour or 62, 63 miles an hour, and you know you're limited at 65 or 105 kilometers an hour, just a little bit faster than they're going, you don't need to be doing that extra little tiny, tiny bit. Just match their speed at a safe distance. You're not gonna save any time by getting around them. It's gonna take you 15, 20 miles to pass them because you can only do 65 and they're already doing 62, 63. Just ease off the throttle, deep breath, no rush. Okay, I know every freight, every load of freight is a rush. I know we're always in a rush. Everybody's in a rush. Everyone wants their freight yesterday, but it's not worth people's lives for two miles an hour. It's not worth going two miles an hour faster. Just match their speed, go to safe distance. I mean, me saying that's not gonna change anything. I know, but maybe, maybe next time someone comes up behind someone, they start getting impatient. They'll think of, oh, you know what? Trucker Josh said maybe, you know, let cooler heads prevail. You know, I don't have to get past them. I don't have to be doing two miles an hour faster. That extra 30 seconds I'm gonna save or the extra five, 10 minutes I'm gonna save isn't a big deal. You know, let's just match their speed. Let's not do anything crazy and, you know, put other people at risk. We got a long way to go today yet. Uh, not too long, but five hours or so, five, six hours. So let's hope that that is the end of today's, uh, today's events like that. I have a feeling there will be more because this is a two lane highway. Speed limit here used to be 60 miles an hour. They've bumped it up to 65 now. Now, if I'm doing about 65 and someone comes up behind me limited at 65 and a half, they get very impatient and they like to tailgate me and then try to you know, pull out to pass me on a two lane highway and take 10, 20 miles to pass me. And it's just, it gets annoying after a while. Like usually I'll slow down, I'll let you pass. If there's lots of room, I'll let you pass, get out of my hair or whatever. But if it just keeps happening again and again and again, I'm just, come on guys. <laughs> Okay, I feel better now. See, I vented to you into my windshield and I didn't take it out on that guy specifically and I didn't escalate that situation. <sighs> He's gonna have to learn his lesson eventually, but you know, I've got a job to do right now. I don't think I'm the person to teach him that lesson. I'm sure he will uh, make one of those dumb maneuvers in front of a, a police officer eventually and, uh, and they can take care of it. I just hope that he doesn't hurt anybody along the way. Gotta keep trying to make it by. Maybe even get ahead a little bit. We have it a lot better here than people around in other parts of the world. But I don't like to use that as an excuse for complacency or just contentment. Sure, yeah, we have it better than a lot of other people. But we could also have it a lot better yet, you know? So this is Minot, North Dakota. Just to our left here is Shots Crossroad. So we're gonna stop, get some fuel and a shower. Looks like they redid it again. Did they paint it? Looks nice. Sitting below quarter tanks of fuel. So we're probably gonna be buying about 165 gallons or so. doing parked right in the middle of the fuel lane here. There we go. In 400 meters, turn left on 20th Street and then turn right in 40 meters. No, no, we're going to fuel first. I've never fueled here before, so this is something new. When you're done fueling, you obviously can't pull forward because you'd be blocking everything. Like the pumps are exactly the same as that any flying J or loves. Let's double check my app right now. Make sure that the price hasn't jumped up since this morning. Uh, go here, search nearby. This app is connected to my fuel card, which gives me the true prices of what I'll pay. One sec, it's got to update where I'm at. I'm in Minot. There we go. It did jump up since this morning. Man, 
two cents. So we could have fueled in uh, Carrington, but whatever. We made it here, same price, $4.70 or four seventy one per gallon. Jumped up two cents since this morning. Man, it's just up and down, up and down, up and down. Mostly just up, mostly just up, let's be honest. All right, so I've gone and parked in a parking spot. I'm gonna go and grab a shower. I do get a free shower here with 50 gallons or more of fill. And the numbers are in. We filled up for 162 gallons. My prediction was 165, so that's pretty quick. I know my truck. That equals 613 liters. The last time we filled up was in Urbana at the Casey's in Iowa. From there, we went all the way down to West Burlington and then all the way back here to Minot. That was 1,616 kilometers or 1,000 miles on one fill up. Like I said, price here was $4.71 a gallon USD, equaled $762.87 American, or with all conversions and everything else added into it, in Canadian, $1.71 per liter or $1,048.04 Canadian. Average 6.2 miles per gallon or 37.95 liters per 100 kilometers. And that's not bad uh, because I parked over the weekend, right? I didn't idle much. I just idled a little bit, probably for about, in total, maybe a couple of hours just to keep my batteries charged because I was working with my computer and that could drain the battery. And so uh, I, I keep that up. Plus I have my cooler running in here. So maybe like two hours through it the whole weekend I had the truck idling, so that's not too bad. And that's all added in there. So now I went in and got my receipt. I'm gonna take that up to the front desk. There's gonna be a shower ready for me. I'm gonna go clean myself up and then we're gonna head into Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Long gone to Saskatchewan. Long gone to Saskatchewan. Have you guys looked up that song yet? It's a good song. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but today's your lucky day. You guys want some bull snot? We're doing a bull snot giveaway today. Remember we uh, talked about it this last weekend? Bull snot is gonna send you four cans of their product. All you have to do is go to their website down below, bullsnot.com or bullsnotcanada.com. Unfortunately, this giveaway is only for residents of Canada and the United States at this time, just so you know. But this is the first bull snot one. So if you guys wanna try out their products, I'd recommend them, I use it. I'm not getting paid to advertise this to you or anything. They're just really good people and they're helping me out. I'm helping them out. And we want to get some of their products into your hands so that you can try it for yourself and then tell all your friends about it as well. So what you got to do is you got to go down below, find the link to their website below my video, go to their website and find one of their products that you would like to use. If you've used one already, let me know which ones you've used. Let me know what you think of it. Come back from their website to here. Leave me a comment down below. We'll pick a good. We'll, we'll pick the best one. We'll pin it to the top, and we'll get in touch with you. And uh, we'll be probably doing the giveaways, like sending them out at the end of the month or something like that. We'll work it out with you. But we'll we will get in contact with you. So stay tuned. Get my shoes back on here. You've seen me using bull snot in all my all my videos before, right? You know, uh, their, their main product, I would say. My cans are all beat up already because I have them bouncing around in my truck here beside me, but I keep them within arm's reach all the time. This is the Visible. This is better than Windex. In some places, I've heard it's even kicked Windex off the shelves, and they've replaced it with Bull Snot Visible. It's glass cleaner, marketed as glass cleaner, but you can use it for pretty much anything else. It's safe for all surfaces. Use it on the paint, everything. I use it to clean everything. It works really well. My father-in-law uses the products as well, so does my dad. You don't know until you try it, right? So you want a couple of free ones, let me know down below. First go to their website and come back, tell me something about their products that I know that you went to the website. Obviously the website bullsnot.com is for my American friends. The website bullsnotcanada.com is for my Canadian fellow citizens. So I wanna make sure that you actually go and check out the website. Okay, that's why I'm saying, come back and tell me something about one of the products that you learned about there. Maybe a new one that you haven't seen before. Convince me that you've learned something new from their website down below in the comments section. Okay, the most convincing one that I know is that I know that you went to there. That I know that you went to the website. That'll be the winner. Good luck. We're doing one of these giveaways per week to the end of the year of 2023. We're doing another house giveaway soon. We got nine more of these to go before the end of the year as well. We've already done one the other day, last weekend. 
So make sure you're watching every day because I'm gonna have a new challenge for you every day. It's gonna be something different. I'm gonna have to get you to do something just like this. Go to their website and tell me something you learned about their products in the comment section. Pay attention because there's another house giveaway coming up again too and there'll be another bull snot one next week. I'm just not gonna tell you what day they're on. All right, the day is getting darker out there. It's time to get going. I've been here for an hour and a half now. Uh, had my shower, had a cinnamon bun. It was delicious if you were wondering. Fantastic. Now that I'm all cleaned up, I can get back out there on the road. I've got another uh, two, hour and a half to the border. And then about another hour up from there yet. So about two and a half, three hours of driving today yet. And then we'll shut down. They're expecting me there in the morning tomorrow. We'll go unload. And from the sounds of it, it looks like I'm just going to be headed home after that. Uh, empty. But we'll see. We'll see if anything comes up. You never know. You never know, right? I can't go too far because we got uh, important stuff coming up. And I have uh, some time booked off for the move. Have I mentioned that today? I know. I, I mention that every day. You're probably sick of hearing it from me. But it's the biggest thing going on in my life right now. I'm trying not to talk about it too much. I'm just really excited. So... Sorry, not sorry. Hands are a little sticky. I've got like uh, sticky fingers, sticky cinnamon bun fingers. What's this? Come on, come on. What's wrong with this? Ah, what's going on here? Ah, there it is. Let's use some hand sanitizer. I'll, I'll get that on. There we go. That's my solution. Okay. Ba -ba -da. Oh, I got the sugar rushes now. Yes. I also got a coffee. I'm very excited. Very excited. It's a Colombian coffee. Colombia makes the best coffee. Okay. Give that to you guys. We are ready to roll out. Just since I've been here a little while, let's just do the little tug test. Make sure uh, nothing's happened. Make sure no one's been messing around with my stuff. Make sure the brakes still work and release. There we go. We gotta go this way. I know I pointed the wrong way. Whoops, the doodles. Oh, great, of course. And this guy's gonna be right there. Okay. There you go, bud. Just my luck. That's what I mean. I'm it's the Truman effect, right? As soon as you start rolling, that's when everyone else wants to roll through the same space at the same time. He didn't even wave thank you. So I didn't wave at him either. Take that. I could have just kept going forward and forced him to back up. That would have made more sense. Right? Yeah, we want to go this way down that road. Would have made more sense if he would have backed up, right? Because he's going right down the driveway. I was backing around the corner. To the... Whatever. Whatever. There's a yield sign right here. Feels like there should be a stop sign though, you know? I'm gonna stop anyway. I'm gonna wait for that pickup truck because I'm way too nice. Sometimes I hate how nice I am. I should have gone. It was yield, I didn't have to stop. But I knew that I was gonna be slower than him, so if he comes in behind me, I'm just gonna be slowing him down, right? May as well just let him in front of me. Beautiful out here, eh? All the hills. Just amazing. My not, there's a massive or Air Force base here. United States Air Force. It's a pretty safe place to be. I think that's the main reason for this town, right? Is the Air Force base? It's huge. It's a whole town all like the the town or the Air Force is a town itself. Minot is sort of like the supporting town beside it. Oh, and I want to turn left here. Oh. There we go. Nice truck. Nice truck. Don't worry, I won't hit you. Okay, we got a green light ahead. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Kind of 
figured he was gonna do that. That's okay. Didn't slow me down at all. Oh, and now we gotta wait for traffic. Wonderful. I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing snow very soon. I can just feel it in my bones and just looking around at the sky around me. Looking in front of me there. And also the forecast, that helps too. We're probably gonna see some snow tonight. Definitely gonna see snow tomorrow. 99% chance. So there's still a chance that I'm wrong. We're still in North Dakota. We're getting very close to the Canadian border. The Canadian border is about five miles in front of us. We're headed straight north right now. We're gonna cross from Portal, North Dakota into North Portal, Saskatchewan, and then make our way up. Probably sleep right at the customer, I'm thinking. Either there, like I was saying, or, or down the street at the truck stop. But we'll see how we feel once we get across the border. We'll see how bad the snow is. I might want to be at the truck stop so that I have a, you know, just in case if my truck doesn't keep me warm, if my bunk heater stops or my batteries die or whatever, and I need a warm place to go into, I like to be at a 24 hour truck stop so that I can go inside and keep warm if needed. It's not that cold out, it's about zero right now, or 32 Fahrenheit. But it's gonna go, <laughs> gonna go lower tonight. Well, we're back in Canada. Southern Saskatchewan oil country. And it's about two hours, hour and a half to two hours to our destination. I think I'm gonna sleep right at the customer. I think that's the best spot. They said that that's okay for me to do done it before as well and that way we're there first thing in the morning and we're unloaded first thing in the morning they get there at 7 a.m. so hopefully I'll be out of there by like 7 30 we'll see so far no snow yet but there has been questionable raindrops let's say that questionable very snow like well we didn't make it to the customer. I could have, but I found a much better spot to park on the way in Carlisle, Saskatchewan. I'll show you here on the screen where I'm at. So it's a little co-op, little co-op gas station, little truck parking area right off to the side here. No other trucks here. It's getting pretty cold out. It's not cold, cold, but like I said, it's below zero today. So uh, let's see what the forecast is for right here. I want to have somewhere where I can get close close to a building that I can get inside. I don't know if these guys are open 24 hours. I should probably check that. But at least I'm in town. So there's like hotels right across the street and right down there. So if something were to happen and my truck doesn't heat, like I have a bunk heater, a Wabasso bunk heater underneath my sleeper, which keeps my cab warm at night. If that were to break down and then I try to start the truck, my batteries are dead. I'm like, oh no, I'm freezing and I can't keep myself warm. Well, worst case scenario, I can walk if this place is closed, I can walk just to a hotel over there and uh, you know, go in their lobby, warm up, or book a room if they make me. Like, I'm just trying to stay warm, guys, but if you want me, whatever. At least I have an option, right? Other than just freezing. We're coming up to that season again where you heard me talk about it through all of the past previous winters. If you've been following me for a while, you, you know that I've been doing this for a while. I have 12 years of vlogs here on YouTube. Go to my, my channel, click my name below the video after this, and go to my playlist. You can go all the way back to way back in the day when I had hair and a gigantic, crazy Bushman beard. Before I met Britt, when Diesel was with me, he was just a little pup. We've gone through several different trucks in that time already. But so, so you guys know, what I'm getting at is you guys know that in the winter time, I like to be prepared because I've been caught off guard before and I've learned my lessons. That's It's all in the vlogs if you go back. So one winter, it wasn't too, too far away from here, but only 100 and 200 miles away from here, in Saskatchewan anyways. It was minus 60 that day. If you're wondering what's well, minus 60 in Fahrenheit, it doesn't matter. It's colder than you want to feel. Minus 60 in Fahrenheit. Let's see, these guys, oh, these guys close at 10 p.m. Okay, so they're not open 24 hours. It's fine, like I said, we have other options. 
What is minus 60 Celsius in Fahrenheit? is equivalent to minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so it's minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit. It sounds even better when I say it in American. Minus 76 Fahrenheit, and I ran my tanks, or I left my tanks empty overnight when I slept. Almost empty, because I was going to fuel up in the morning, right? I didn't want to fuel up at night, I'll fuel up in the morning. I didn't know at the time, because I was younger and inexperienced, I didn't have anybody on YouTube teaching me these things. I know I had my dad, and he probably would have taught me these things if I would have asked him. But, uh, you know, I was a young kid and I figured I know best, I know better. Why ask dad for advice? I've also grown out of that and I've learned that it's much better to ask advice of your dad. Uh, he has saved me many times already. <laughs> so, so uh, it was minus 76. I slept all night with about a quarter tank of fuel, which means that the fuel was warm because the engine was running and keeping that fuel warm, circulating through the engine, back to the tanks, it keeps the fuel warm. What that does is the rest of the tank is very cold. And what happens when you put like warmer liquids in a cold environment, right? Or, or differences in temperature, you get condensation. So I got condensation that built up inside my tank. What did that do? It all ran down into the fuel and now I had water in my fuel and what that does is it gels up your fuel. It went through my fuel lines in the morning when I was way out in the middle of nowhere, Saskatchewan, out by uh, Chamberlain, Saskatchewan. Driving down the road, all of a sudden, engine shuts off, will not run. What had happened is all of that condensation gets into the tanks, turns into a gel, like a putty-like gel substance. You call it like gelled fuel goes into your fuel lines, it plugs up your fuel filter because before your fuel goes into the motor, it goes through a filter, right? The fuel goes through, the gel doesn't. Eventually enough gel piles up on the filter that it actually blocks off the whole filter from letting any fuel into the engine whatsoever. Now the engine is starved of fuel and you're not going anywhere. So I was very lucky that I, I got the engine sputtering up enough that I could limp it back to town, which was about five to 10 miles. Where was I exactly? between five and 10 miles back to Chamberlain because I was, I'd just gone through this town. Chamberlain's this tiny little town, maybe a population of like 100 people, but there's a hotel there. They had a no pet policy, but since it was minus 76 Fahrenheit and I was stranded, my engine wouldn't run. I turned my bunk heater on. That was gelled up too, right? Because the gel, it, it takes the, 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 the heater under there takes fuel from your tanks. So that gelled up. And so I had to get a hotel room to stay warm and I had diesel to take care of too. I didn't want him to freeze to death. So I, I went to the hotel and I told them my situation and they made an exception on their no pet policy for me and me and Diesel. Diesel was allowed in and the exception was that they were that they allowed him to bring his pet, me, into the hotel room. Which was very nice of them, so I didn't have to sleep outside. But uh, that's that's the night I learned, because the next day I had to get a tow from there into Regina, which is an hour further south of there and had to have the truck just sit inside. That's the only thing you do to fix that is you take the truck into a warm shop and let it sit in there for 24 hours, 12 to 24 hours. And you change the filters and you add some anti-gel, uh, like Howl's diesel treatment products. You can add that to it to uh, get rid of that gel in the tanks. The way you prevent all of this, the lesson that I learned from that, the way you prevent all of that is go to bed with full tanks of fuel so that there's no room for condensation to build up, number one. Number two, always have a plan. When it's minus 76 Fahrenheit outside, don't go running out into the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. Because if something happens, it's going to be way harder to get help than if that happened during the day. So try to operate during daylight hours as much as possible. When the sun goes down, you stop. Within reason, because the sun goes down so early up here. But try to get an early, early start and stop early in the wintertime especially. It doesn't always work that way. I get it. I like running nights. I run into the night all the time. All the time. And it, it's a risk I take. I know better, but I, I take the risk anyway because I like driving nights. But anyway, so I learned that lesson. And also the biggest lesson that I learned, be very careful where you park. This all ties into have a plan in the wintertime. Have extra blankets with you because if the worst happens and you can't find a warm place to go to, your truck won't start and you can't get your, your cab to get heated and you're stuck. You have no other options. You have to have blankets and you have to have food and you have to have a way of keeping warm in your truck. You have to be prepared. So we're not to that point of winter right now yet where you have to be that prepared, 
but we are getting to the point where it's it's going to get a little bit cold tonight. Uncomfortably cold. I'm not going to I'm not at risk of dying or anything, but I I I'm already getting into that habit of parking somewhere in a town or somewhere where I can have somewhere warm to go if I need to. Uh, tonight, the forecast, it is supposed to go... Oh, severe weather alerts. Oh, that was for Minot. Oh, good thing we left Minot. Oh, it's not here. Okay, so it's minus 2 Celsius here right now. It's only going down to minus 6 overnight. But there is a snowfall warning in effect. Oh. Starting at 3 a.m. Oh. <laughs> Wonderful. Another reason why you don't want to be parked out in the middle of nowhere. You might wake up covered in snow. You kind of want civilization around you just in case of that, right? So, uh, what is minus 6 Celsius and Fahrenheit? Minus 6 degrees Celsius is 21.2 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how cold it's going to get down to tonight, which isn't life or death. That's fine. I do want to make sure that I am close to civilization though, especially because of that snowfall warning now. I don't want to be parked out in the middle of nowhere because there's no services at the customer there. If something were to happen, there's nobody there. Nobody. And it's way out in the middle of nowhere. They're not getting there till 7 a.m. And if there's a snowfall warning in effect, there's not even a guarantee that they're going to be there at 7 a.m. They might be late to work. They might not come into work at all, depending on how much snow we get. So if that happens, at least I'm here, right? And I'm safe. So now I'm going to call them first thing in the morning, make sure that they're there at work if it's really bad. That way when I show up there, I'm not the only guy there, right? And if I slept there overnight and it we, we end up having this huge snowstorm and nobody even comes into work tomorrow, well, now I'm stuck there all by myself. No shelter, no convenience stores, no bathrooms, nothing. Just... Parked out in a parking lot in the middle of a field, pretty much. Middle of a field. It's not a good idea. So, that was a long way of telling you of the reason why I'm staying in Carlisle, Saskatchewan tonight. I hope that made sense. As winter approaches, this is my time to sort of maybe teach you little lessons of what I've learned. Don't look at me like I'm some kind of trucker guru. I'm still learning things every day. I have an open mind to learn new things. I'm okay with being wrong on some things and then learning how to do them better. I'm just, I can teach you how, like these lessons that I've learned. So tune in, tomorrow's a new vlog. We'll see how much snow we get overnight. Let's wake up here together in the morning, see how bad it is. We're safe, we're in a good location. There's an A and W right here so we can get some onion rings in the morning. I like that. Oh, my mouth is watering now, shoot. Oh, I shouldn't have said anything. Oh. <laughs> Remember, everybody, winter is coming. Here on the Canadian prairies, winter is here. When you get out on the highways, please think of me. Think of all us other truckers out here. Please drive safe. Please don't cut us off. Please give us space. And we'll try to do the same for you. Right, my trucking brothers and sisters? Let's also look out for the four-wheelers out there. Drive like you have someone to go home to, because I do. And I know you do too. Even if it's your dog, or your cat, or your TV. We all want to get home. When we leave the driveway, we leave with the expectation that we're going to come back at the end of the day. Let's just make sure that that happens for all of us. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe, everyone. Thanks for watching.